attacks and the machete. Trying to break into two separate houses. But come at the hour. My unit, my unit. Come at the interceptors. Get off! Out and running, out and running. We're riding with West Yorkshire's elite. What's on? Alongside their pursuit drivers. Contact, contact, standby. On target with their firearms unit. In the air with their eye in the sky. Off and running, off and running. This is the front line in the fight against crime. Down the clock! Down the ground! Down the ground! This is police interceptors. It's just another day in paradise. Coming up. Wakefield, when a gobby car thief runs out of options, it's one in the eye for the interceptors. Is that your middle name, Mango? Oh, there we go. The wheels come off an angry man's evening. Don't you start tensing up. There we are. And off the floor. There we are. Off the wheel. An ambush on drug dealers comes up trumps. Lads, I found some more gear over here. It's bank holiday weekend, but there's no jolly to Scarborough for Richard Jaffa Whiteley and Sergeant Chris Slaven. Could be uh, potentially quite a lively one. Mystic Jaffa got it bang on. Just got a report of a uh, road traffic collision. You've blown 93, three times over the legal drink drive limit. Through the night, they blew light to one emergency call after another. X-ray sir, far one, I'm making his way over as well. And deal with anything or anyone they find along the way. How you doing? Hello, mate. Are you just Hello. drunk, lad? Yeah, I'm drunk right away. You had a good night, haven't you? It's been a busy night, but as day breaks, it's about to get a lot busier with the next shout over the radio. That one there is just moving back into Wakefield. Cops know the stolen Mondeo is back on the road, as it's just been spotted nearby. Every available unit is racing to intercept. Follow them. Follow them. <laughs> Jaffa and Chris join the search. Hoping there's some truth in early bird catches the car thief. Rugby fan Jaffa is hoping to tackle the driver and send him straight to the sin bin. But it's another unit a mile ahead who gets eyes on the Iffy Mondeo at a petrol station. They creep up behind the suspect car. And block it. Sixty head I've got it. It's on uh, Sunny Road in BP. All oh, units BP going south of the road, please. But the car thief has got other ideas. He reverses into a petrol pump, then floors it. Gone in sixty seconds. He's got a pack of interceptors in his rear view mirror. Jaffa and Chris right in the mix. There it is. With a few hundred horses on his tail. Out of Wakefield, just past an agri collision. The car thief jumps a red light and takes the pursuit out of town. Left, 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 onto uh, Heath Common. Requesting T-Pack authority, I've got the units behind me. But it seems his tango with a petrol pump has done for one of the tyres. He's got uh, a puncture here, 
near side wheel from a collision that occurred in the BP garage. Speed is 70 miles per hour. Even with three wheels on his wagon, he continues caning the Mondeo. Speed is currently 80. Traffic is light, safe to continue. Overtaking an ambulance at 70 miles an hour, he leaves his tyre barrelling down the carriageway. Yes, yes, uh, his tyre is shredded, he's, uh, he's lost his rear near side tyre. Forcing other cars to dodge it. Oh, for real. Continuing speed is 8 0. Still continuing speed is 8 0. Stand back. The three wheelers weaving all over the shop and takes desperate measures in a bid to shake off the interceptors. 6 0 is the left, left towards Normanton. Wrong side of the roundabout and a right, right onto Wakefield Road. I had followed it was safe. Speed 6 0 miles per hour. At 5 a.m., the roads are quiet, but he's heading into a residential area. Speed 6 0 miles per hour. And struggling on three wheels, he loses it. He's lost of control. Crash, 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 Wakefield Road. He's off on foot. But for how long? <laughs> a pack of interceptors are hunting a stolen Mondeo that made off from a petrol station. There it is. Taking dangerous driving to the max. Car thief lost the tyre, then lost control. But will he lose Wakey's finest interceptors? Moving it, pardon, sunshine. Give up. Stop resisting your arms. Relax. Relax your arm. Relax your arm. Do no need for that. Relax your arm. Yeah, get cuff. After a face full of parva spray, too fast, too furious, is finally in cuffs. Relax your arm. To the back. There's no need for all that. What do you mean there's no need for all that? Throw them onto that side, onto his, his left hand side. 601 to 10. Just give him a search whilst he's down here. You are under arrest and suspicion of dangerous driving. Fail to stop for police and theft of a motor vehicle. Do you understand that? Theft? What do you mean? We believe that Monday was stolen. Why did you even spray? Because you resisted. Resisting? How did I resist? There's four officers on you and you're still struggling with your arms. Right. What's your name, fella? Put your knees out. Mondeo man is not a happy chap and won't give up his name. Up we go. Come on, it's not designed to be pleasant stuff, is it? That's why it's wear off. The effects of Parva wear off after 15 to 30 minutes. We get a divisional van. Just keep your eyes up in there, try to keep them open. He's also struggling to open his mouth. What's your first name? Just right. to let you know that I'm here, I'm Phil with the Channel 5 from Police Interceptors. Oh. Great. That loosened his tongue. I love your show, but it's a piece of shit. It seems they've collared an unlikely fan, but he's not such a fan of the Sarge's questions. We confirmed this chap's name yet? Yeah? He won't tell us. So what, what's your name, lad? Eh, <laughs> uh, Self, you big jockum. Wait, what? Is that your middle name then, Gov? Whoa, here we go. Yeah, got a, there's one in my bag. Spitting at an emergency worker is an assault, which can carry a maximum penalty of a year behind bars. Don't start spitting, right? Well, You're now going to be wearing a spit hood for your safety and ours, OK? Let's get it up. Spit guards are lightweight mesh hoods, 
which were rolled out to all of West Yorkshire's frontline officers in 2017 to protect against transmission of diseases through spitting. That's all right. We've all got families to go home to and to go home with a risk of infection or disease because someone spat at you, then they can wear a, they can wear a hood. No, no excuse for it, it's disgusting. I'd rather get punched than spat at. Do you really think I'm bothered? Look what you've done. Look what you've done. With the gobby driver finally under control... You can stay there, and then the wind can get around your chops, can't it? The Sarge assesses the damage. It took a highly skilled uh, technician to, <laughs> to get it looking anywhere like you. No, that's uh, an absolute write-off, unfortunately. Um, but given the speeds we're going at, never going to be anything else. In court, the judge said this was a chillingly appalling piece of driving. It turned out Mondeo man had 10 previous convictions for nicking cars. He pleaded guilty to dangerous driving, aggravated vehicle taking, driving whilst disqualified and without insurance, as well as assaulting two emergency workers. Gobby was sent down for 20 months, and banned from the roads for five years and 10 months. In 2018, nearly 3,000 people died from the use of illicit drugs in England and Wales. Anyone caught dealing drugs could face anything from a hefty fine to life in prison. Drug dealing has an impact, a huge impact on, uh, on society, on the people that use the drugs. Um, and we find that the sort of criminality that follows that around, you don't just get sort of drug use, you'll get theft that relates to it, a lot of serious crime is, is based around drugs and drug usage. So it's always good to, to get the dealers off the street. They are absolute detritus who, who prey on the weakness and vulnerability of others. West Yorkshire police are fighting back with a specialist group of interceptors, the Pit Team. Working on intel with a fleet of covert cars they're hidden in plain sight. The secret weapon in the war on drug dealers. Cracking down on the sale of Class A's tonight is seasoned interceptor Steph Wisechuk and his pit team partner, Harry Jeffrey. Following in the footsteps of his dad and granddad, Harry joined the force three years ago. His proudest police moment is becoming part of the pit team. And six foot six Big H is more than up to the job. And the job tonight? Take down some drug dealers in the unmarked BMW 140i. There's been a sighting of that vehicle we're looking out for, the Golf. It's linked to drug dealing. It's quarter to midnight on a Saturday night. Uh, so possibly out dealing in uh, town centres, Class A drugs. Right, get some right pace on up here, mate. Steph unleashes the Beamer's 340 horses. There's been another sighting of this vehicle, uh, so we're not far away. Uh, we should be on this any second. Then he kills the Blues and enters stealth mode, just in time. Yes, passing, yes, us. Yes. passing us. Howarth Road, Howarth Road, towards Bradford. We're just turning. Spinning round. Get to Toller Lane, mate, to Toller Lane. They tail the dealers from a distance and guide a second unit in for backup. It's just going past the petrol station. Going into the petrol station. Going into the petrol station. We'll hold off, we'll hold off. The element of surprise is key to catching them with evidence. So it's lights out and wait. Can you see what's coming out of the It's come straight out. Has it? It's come straight out. D down or up? On, oh, it's coming towards us. Ah, oh, it is. It's gone through and it's turned around and come out. It's parking up in front of us. Flying under the radar in their covert car, in an extraordinary turn of events, the dealers have unknowingly stopped just metres away from the pit team. Harry clocks a man walking to the target car. The question is not if, when they strike. I have to get him there. You're going to get and grip him? Timing is everything. The light's off. Yeah, light's off. Block it. They go in pit team style. Still you are! Still you are! 
Stay with you. Stay with you. I'm still with you. I'm still with you. Stay with you. Now, both of you. Keep your hands where I can see them both. Keep your hands. Do it now. Yeah, I'm really hurt. Hello. In just 30 seconds, they collared three stunned suspects. You're all the same under section 23 at Misuse of Drugs Act, OK? Yep, yeah, got them secure. You look to chuck me out. Yeah, that's fine. Eagle-eyed Harry sees the front seat passenger throw something out of his car door. Something lands by the tree, and it's not a squirrel. There, mate, there, mate. Some, some rap, sir. It's 27 minutes past midnight. You're all under arrest. Suspicion with possession with intent to supply. Class A drug, OK? So what we've got, as I've approached the driver's door, the passenger has discarded this, which is a clear plastic bag containing what looks to be uh, rocks of Class A heroin. Crack cocaine. We'll get it forensically tested. Uh, but no, we'll just have a look, see if he's chucked out else out. Steph searches the back seat passenger who had just approached the car. Are, are you a drug user yourself? Just do yeah. yeah. What sort of drugs do you use? Heroin. Well, Harry has a word with the driver. Mate, just while we're out here, yeah? You're further under possession of offensive weapon, OK? I'll oh, mind you under caution. Real, you're under caution, mate. You don't keep it there. A roadside search turns up nothing more. And it's all down the nick for a game of 20 questions. But something else has come to light on a path nearby. There's a load more gear on pavement here in uh, all wraps are spilt all over all over the tarmac. I've just done a wider search uh, of the pavement area from where the gentleman from the rear seat was sighted first before he got in the car. And we've located what, what we can see on the pavement here, which are a load more small wraps of what we believe to be Class A drugs. So based upon that, we're going to gather all that as one exhibit, seize that, and then do a, a, another further search around the, the other area here in the gardens, see if there's anything else discarded as well. A nearby house has CCTV cameras, which could solve the mystery of the wraps on the pavement. While Steph takes a look at that, there's a family reunion. Harry's uncle Simon has arrived with drug sniffer dog Charlie. Another user's got it back. I've got driver, and then passenger has gone, oh, oh, chucked a load of Class A out. But then we found the load outside that, the entrance. So I don't know if the lad that's got in the back has dropped a load. Charlie gets down and dirty in a nearby garden. Business first. Before taking a closer sniff at the car, where there are items cops think could indicate dealing. But Charlie does not find any more drugs. However, Steph's now caught up on his favourite programme. Then on the CCTV footage, you see uh, two packages being discarded from the vehicle. Uh, one lands at the base of the tree, where we've located a quantity of Class A, and then the other one, you see like a speckle of, uh, of white dots that appear on the screen. Uh, that's the small white wraps that we found at the end of uh, one of the property's garden. The rear seat passenger has immediately claimed that he's a user of drugs as opposed to a dealer of drugs. So I think we've caught them in the act of, of dealing from the vehicle to the user. The suspected Class A drugs were tested and proved to be crack cocaine and heroin. Just over a week later, the driver and front seat passenger were arrested again for drug dealing. The man Harry saw throwing drugs from the car has been convicted of possession with intent to supply Class A drugs and sent to prison for seven years. The driver was also convicted of dealing Class A drugs and given a 32-month prison sentence. No legal action was taken against the man cops or getting into the car. It's a good job. Um, just what our unit set up to do, getting the drug dealers off the streets, reacting to the intelligence that's coming from our communities, being able to action that quickly, and it's paid off. Every year in Great Britain, there are around 5,700 crashes involving a drink driver, leaving over 8,500 people killed or injured. That's 23 a day. 
it's a problem that doesn't seem to go away is drink driving. I can't get my head around it because it's, it's plain to see that once you're under the influence of alcohol, you, you, you haven't got your wits about you and therefore you shouldn't be in charge of a, a one and a half, two ton killing machine and it, it, does me, it does me head in. Drink driving, just stop, don't do it. It's not worth it. It's a hot bank holiday evening. As revellers pack up the partying, most will call a cab home, but some decide to get behind the wheel. Interceptor Gav Pearson is on a housing estate in Wakefield, investigating how this fine piece of German engineering... Oh, he's done well, hasn't he? Oh, double Jesus. ...ended up kaput. Yeah. yeah. He's ripped the axle off. Gav gets up to speed with the cop who was first on scene. He's been reversing in and out of it, reversing to this. This chap's seen him do it and apparently he's absolutely steaming. After hitting parked cars and ripping off his own wheel and suspension, eyewitnesses say the allegedly drunk driver parked up, locked up and fled the scene. Bystanders claim the driver was wearing shorts and a burgundy top. And there's been a sighting. What's that up there? On top path, with a red, red Adidas top on. Put his top path say on. Up there, top path, no net field. Yeah, I got a one. Just, just stay, at, just stay at it, way, lad. All right, mate. Martial artist Gav swapped a soldier's uniform for a copper's blues 12 years ago, on a mission to put wrongans to rights. And priority tonight. Whoever ditched that knackered beamer. There's path lads down this way or up top. They were up top, but if you go back and you were walking back there. Yeah. That's good for me, have a look. Cops split up to search for the suspect. Plenty of boots on the ground could flush him out. As you can see, it just turns out into fields and pitch black. I've got a feeling he's probably done one anyway. Because uh, if you've seen our car, he knows he's going to be in trouble. We'll have a walk about and see if we can see anybody. All's quiet on the Wakefield front. Until they spot someone. Just get that side, get that side. Will it be the driver? Interceptors are looking for whoever left their car like this and took other cars out on the way. Cops have flooded the area. Up there, top path, no net field. Yeah. And after a tip off from a local lad. We'll have a walk about and see if we can see anybody. They've spotted someone jumping a garden fence. Just get that side, get that side. You got him. Get some bracelets on. Oh, yeah. Get some yeah. bracelets on. Get some bracelets on, Cocker. Yeah. He stumbled right into the interceptor's cuffs. What's your name, bud? Matthew. Matthew. Yeah, you know. Out on your shunt tab? No, no. No at all. No, no, no. Just the keys. My car keys. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up here? Yeah. Obviously, we've just got some concern about your cocker because it's stayed to your car. No, no. Stay to my car? Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Fellow interceptor Robbo has some leads. He's got some BMW keys on him, which I bet will uh, start the car that's been involved in it all. And he is uh, the name person on the insurance. Sure enough, the key fits the car. Nice motor ruin, isn't it? I'm surprised it came back, actually. I'm, I'm surprised as well, mate, to be honest. I think he's... I think he just don't know what he's doing. While well, Gavin Robbo searched the battered beamer, this half-cut Casanova blames his missus. I'm not trying to punish it. What's said by his girlfriend at the time is she's, she's on my insurance. Okay. So she can drive my car. Fully All right, mate. What I'm trying to say to you is, what are you trying to do to say, 
Well, we've got reasonable grounds no, to believe listen. that you were driving that yes. car. No, and also, I can smell intoxicants on your breath. Yeah, no, but listen. And you've had a drink tonight, haven't yeah, you? I, no, so, no, I listen, think me, can that I, you've been driving that car while under the influence. Can I say something to you? Sorry. I'm not saying that I, I haven't had a drink tonight. All I'm saying is that I haven't drove my car. Oh, it's time to say girlfriend's been driving. <laughs> if you thought now, my car is hell. My car is insured with my name and my girlfriend. Those three little words, it wasn't me, are all this boyfriend's interested in. He might be passing the book to his girlfriend, but the interceptors want to put him to the test. Right, so because I think you've been driving and you're under the influence of alcohol, I'm going to ask you for a specimen of breath by means of this handout device. So take a deep breath, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, thank you. That's perfect. The thing is, Right, you failed. So at this moment in time, you're under arrest for suspicion of driving whilst over prescribed limit. He's blown 85, over twice the legal limit. When you arrested me, did you arrest my girlfriend? Still pointing the finger at his missus, he might be in trouble next time he sees her. And right on cue... How are we doing? The suspect's girlfriend arrives in a taxi, and she has a different version of events. Have you been driving that BMW tonight? No, I haven't. No, you haven't at all? OK, you're willing to give a statement to, in relation to that? No, I haven't driven that BMW at all tonight. Gav speaks to the woman's parents and a taxi firm, who both confirm she's not been driving. All of a sudden... OK. ..they hear a smash at the other end of the street. Get her. Just get her back. Please, let me help him. Please, Move, move. Whatever you're doing, stop it. Whatever you're doing, stop it. Move. The suspect has seen red and booted out the patrol car window. Pack it in. Pack it in. And now he's facing the red dot of Gab's taser. Get out and get down on the floor. Get down on the floor. Get down. Get down on the floor. Just said, do it. Just get down on the floor. Who's he said? Go on, I don't know. Lay down on the floor. Hands. Lay down. Hands up front. Go on then, I don't know what's here. No, instead you're damaging our car. Do I don't know what's Go on. 6 4, have you got a van coming to QED? Q Q Can you get it expediting? He's put window through on the car. Get off! Wait, no. Just relax. Yeah. Get off my wrist. He's not. Get off! Oh, come on. Oh, oh, what? What? Just calm down there. It's not as knackered as his beamer but the cop car is off the street for the foreseeable, while the culprit is very much on the street. Is that you there with them all there? Just... Matthew, listen, listen, listen. Yeah. Listen. 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 Gav tries to reason with right. him. Right, we've all got bald heads. Right, no, you are it? making this a hell of a lot worse for yourself. Because I've done nothing wrong. Right, if you've done no, listen, if you've done no wrong, then it'll come out and wash, won't it? It was going to be simple, go through, have a breath test, and then that'll probably be it. Right, Instead, right. now, you've made it worse by putting our car window through. Right. So you're under arrest on criminal damage now as well. So how about, let's not make it any worse. So what I've done wrong? Stop being a prat and so just calm down. So what I've done wrong? The gravity of the situation isn't sinking in. Just put that bracelet on there. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to be a dickhead. Well, you've been enough, haven't I? What's yeah. I doing this for? Because for what? For that, yeah, but listen, listen, what? listen, well, listen. Like, hey, Witnesses have turned around and said that somebody matching your description has got out of that car and That's it belongs to you and you're drunk. Yeah. So what this we're going to do, listen, we've That's got right. something to follow. It's called the process of investigation. OK, so you're going to get investigated for it. If it isn't you, then there's no need to worry. Right. But now you've gone and done that and you're making things worse. Because you pissed me off. With car wreckers showing no remorse, Gav speaks to a witness. Did you when see him get out? When we were studying, he couldn't get out of the car. He struggled to get out of the vehicle when he came back, so then it flagged up to me and him, well, he's obviously blind drunk. The suspect's violent behaviour means he'll be taken to custody in the cage, a cell made from reinforced steel. Don't you start tensing up. Don't you start tensing up. Lift your leg up. Lift your leg up. Watch your head. Turn. In. Let's be friend. Sit down, I'm not your friend. Yeah, it's been nuts. Initially, we thought we weren't even going to find him because he's run off into the darkness, and then lo and behold, he's trying to climb over some fence <laughs> really rubbishly. And he's just made it worse and worse and worse for himself, and now he's got an answer for a criminal damage as well as a drink driving and damaging two cars. Um, 
I think he's going to wake up with a really bad headache in the morning. There was no time for a headache in the morning as the next day the suspect went straight to court, where he was convicted of criminal damage and failure to provide after not completing the evidential breath test in custody. He was disqualified from driving for 18 months, ordered to do 80 hours of unpaid work and had to pay a total of £370 in compensation, costs and victim surcharge. Drink, eat, don't mix. And bank holidays especially don't mix. But keeps me in a job. Bronze two, strike, strike, strike. Interceptors get up to 18 months intensive driving training. Okay. Stand by for a decamp. Before they can tackle criminals on the roads. Speed is currently 9090 miles an hour. Do we have any of the units nearby, please, Miss Stinger? Pursuits take them to every corner of their 2,000 square kilometre patch. Come here, Quest Author, if it's T-Pack, please. Deployed, it's going to go down towards dead end. It's going to be a decamp. And coming head on with lawbreakers goes with the territory. Contact, contact. Okay. Oh, ah, no! But even the most experienced interceptors. What the hell are they doing? Can face extreme risk when they least expect it. Cars on fire. They are contacted, and you are also contacted. Well, I blaze now. Interceptors Bob Hoyle and Matthew Graham are blue lighting to help stop a cloned car. Those units have gone to air and sergeant's got behind this vehicle. Um, it's a cloned vehicle that's come M1 today from Sheffield. Um, sergeant's out behind it, following it. Multiple cars are racing to intercept the cloned motor in case the driver fails to stop. But we are a good probably 10, 10, 15 minutes away from where the car is. Um, so we've got a bit of playing up catch up time to make. Another unit making ground towards the cloned car is also travelling on blue lights and sirens. It's 2 a.m. and the roads are deserted. As the Mini pulls out of the junction, there's nowhere for the police car to go. The Mini spins into the road before coming to a stop. When in danger, officers can press an emergency button on their radio, known as Code Zero. Every cop in the team is alerted. So we're just going to divert and give Nick a bit of an hand, make sure he's all right. Three other units have also responded to the crash. It's a shocking scene. <laughs> Bob's first port of call is to check on both drivers. Yeah, right, Bob. Yeah. All the boys have got off there, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, the mini driver is a student who was on her way back from the library. Right, who have you let know? Uh, no one. Right. It's you... fine because I'll go home to like some lot and I'll wait for right. that. I'm going to tell my dad in the morning. Okay, that's fine. Just because don't they worry. will panic because they're so far away. And... Right. Luckily, although it doesn't look it, it is walking wounded. You know, we obviously respond to things quite quickly, and you think at this time of the night, there's not a lot of uh, traffic on the on the roads. But you know, when we're travelling at speed through through residential areas, something like this can go wrong. We've got a couple of cars wrote off, but could have been a lot worse. Could have had some uh, serious injuries uh, as a result of this. But luckily, we haven't. The crash may be just an accident, but all collisions involving police cars are investigated. 
obviously your natural line is to turn out like that and where police cars ended up is in the middle of the road so I would assume as Nick's seen a coming he's tried to maybe go around her a little bit to avoid the collision uh, and you can see some of the skid marks here from police vehicle having to stop suddenly thankfully uh, modern cars they're designed to keep you safe uh, and take a, a lot of brunt at impact airbags fully inflate in just 25 milliseconds and in collisions like this they play a vital role in preventing serious injury don't matter what speed you're traveling at if something suddenly comes into your path you can't just stop on a dime can you the mini driver was reported for driving without due care and went on an educational driving course thankfully no one has been seriously injured but incidents like this are a stark reminder of how dangerous the job of an interceptor can be. I mean, this just goes to show that, you know, police officers do put themselves at risk, you know, anything can happen. Still to come. This is what we're paying tax for. Fighting talk from a wannabe hard man. I would put you to sleep, you'd be out cold, you wouldn't know what day is me. West Yorkshire Police handle around 4,500 calls and reports every day. Cops responding on the ground are busy, so the last thing they need is people lying and wasting their time. 8th of June 1966. Yeah. Right. What are your real details? We've probably been lied to a thousand times. Um, you, you, you get a flavour for it, you get to know by people's reactions and where they hesitate. How old are you? Well, 61. <laughs> That's the worst attempt at trying to lie ever. These are all signs that, you know, as soon as that happens, you go, ah, on, here we go again. Another liar. You soon get a nose for uh, realising what's true and what isn't. It's the lively Saturday night shift. Oh, I think I'm going to be late on his way, I think. And interceptors Wayne Mason and Tom White are finishing up with one job when the next one flies past. And Altea, three up and bombing through Leeds, screaming, Nick me. We've got to stop all day long. Wayne lights them up. And surprisingly, the driver stops. Hello, mate. Hi, mate. You all right? You won't seem to pull me up every time like that. I've never met you. Hey, up. There are two young lads in the car, and Tom spies something shifty. Are we doing just looks at his kicks. Suspecting the front seat passenger of stowing something in his trousers, whoa, whoa, whoa. they cuff him. You're detained at the moment for a search, all right? He's not best pleased. You can't just put ankles I can't, because I've just seen it. I suspect I've just seen you're trying to conceal something. Oh my god. Look at the dramas you lot are doing. You're bored. You've got so, all else better to jump do. out, mate. Weekend nights are some of the busiest times of the week for the interceptors. This but officer doesn't have a clue what he's doing, does he? If everyone cooperates, this stop should be dealt with in no time. No, no one wants me? In a minute. All right. Let's deal with the thing that set uh, Mike. With my daughter, uh, just skinning my lift on. Are you? All right. He ain't got out on it. All right, search. Do what you want. Search what you want. I've got nothing on me, officer. Okay. It seems the mouthy front seat passenger. Have a seat in there, pal. Doesn't want to comply. What's your name, mate? I'm not obliged to be. Really... No, collect. You're not. You're not at the moment. No. I'm... Okay, that's fine. Perhaps the driver can fill the cops in on his daughter's boyfriend's details. What's his name? <laughs> you're not going to believe this. I don't even know his proper name yet. He goes out with your daughter. Name? What's his first name? I, uh, I don't know his first. You're fibbing, aren't you? Well, is he I'm not, not giving you it? to no. give you my details. So, I'm not getting involved with him. I keep mad you. The amnesiac driver's details check out, but interceptors can't shake the feeling that they're being fed porkies. And the discovery of a cannabis grinder beside the backseat passenger adds to their suspicions. Is it yours? No, it's not mine. The tight-lipped mystery man in the police car suddenly finds his voice. A plastic grinder? Yeah. 
You get arrested for grinders these days, tobacco grinders that are perfectly legal in the UK. Correct. Like this sausage over here. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have a life. Sausage? You don't have a life. That's it. What's you want that? cigarette in. I don't smoke pot, mate. These guys are tying up two cops during a busy shift. You're a joke, mate. Go get a life. But Tom is determined to get to the bottom of this three-ring circus, starting with the name of its chief clown. Mate, mate, your story doesn't add up. He's been going out with your daughter for a while, but you don't know his name, and you're driving him about. You're not obliged! Don't give him my name! Well, you obviously know his name, because he's saying don't give him your name. I know, but I have given him my name. No, yeah, his I name. Do, I don't know his name. So yeah. why are you lying saying you don't know his name? But, but I mean, and, yeah, I, it's not down to me, it's up to him, I don't know. I'd be very careful about how you proceed. Wise words, and the penny seems to have dropped. Tell them your name and we can get off home. No, you dare tell these not my name. I'm not obliged Why? to give details. All right, do you want my name? I, I, I like your name. Oh. All right, go on. My name's O-M-A-A. -A. Finally, Mr Mystery gives up his details and reveals he's a tender 17 years old. Thanks, mate. And then we can get off. I want to go to... Oh, he's, he's still coming for the search. <laughs> I'm still coming for the search because he's got no else better to do this <laughs> one. They might be stalling for time, but the mouthy passenger can't avoid the inevitable search. I can't wait to see that look on your face when you okay. don't find anything. OK. I can't wait. The driver gives Tom a piece of his mind. Right. I've got to be playing these games, you know what I mean? You've been filmed, you look, you look like a prat acting like this. Who looks I'm like a prat? I'm and old enough to be your dad and you're acting like a knobhead. He's old enough to you be your like dad. A you should Is have it? some respect. You should have some respect. What with the mouthy teenage passenger giving both barrels... Well, you're not in shit. Without that uniform, you're nothing. ..and the driver spinning the usual yarn... This is how police officers act when they get paid tax. This is what we're paying tax for. ..Wayne has had enough. You're not helping the situation, yeah, are you? No, it looks like a prat. There's a grinder on the yeah, back seat yeah, of this car. Mean, yes. OK. So it's probably something struck like a tiny little and everyone... dog end or something. Or well, a bit of... Possibly. But, but we don't know until we search... Anyway. But we don't know until we search right. folk, Colin. So right. shut up and let me talk. Right. I understand what you're saying, yeah. Okay. I hope you do, yeah. because at the moment you're making things a bit more difficult right. than it needs to be. OK, then. If you jump out for me first... Peace restored, Wayne can get on with the search. That is... How much grinder. Did it cost? Another grinder. Yeah. All that, right. that, that one is mine, isn't it? That one is yours. Yeah. So the tally is three grinders and a pack of lies. What else can Wayne weed out from the car? What's this? Backy. Yeah, and cannabis. I'll take the that if you want. Yeah. Well, I don't want, I want to know who it three. is. It's mine, it's mine. Yeah? That's yours? It's mine. Well, you thought you didn't smoke well, it. Well, it's mine. I just want to go on the bed. It's mine. Well, I never had a street It doesn't party. work like that, Colin. I only have a little bit now and again, once in a blue moon. Oh, so you do use it? Not once in a blue moon. All these Not stories keep changing, yeah. don't they? <laughs> He's gone from saying that they've got nothing to uh, admitting that the drugs I've just found are his, so... Can't believe a word that any of them are saying. The cannabis will be seized and the mouthy passenger who denies hiding drugs in his trousers, will be searched at custody. And it turns out Mr Mystery is actually a double hard star of the internet. No, I'm on YouTube, oh, Officer Series. Oh, yeah, what Yeah, I've got 20 uh, MMA fighting. MMA fighting? Yeah. Lightweight? No, nah, mate. Well, you're not heavyweight, are you? Featherweight. <laughs> Featherweight. <laughs> but I'd show you some of the make yeah, you feel like he's heavyweight. I'd put you straight to sleep. It just needs me. I would put you to sleep. You'd be out cold. You wouldn't know what day it's me. Sugar Ray Wakefield has turned a stop, which should have been done and dusted in 10 minutes, into two hours of torture, tying up two interceptors with bigger fish to fry. But Tom was bang on. A search at the Nick turned up a small amount of cannabis in the featherweight champ's trousers. Throughout the encounter, he's been obstructive. You know, he's, he turns an adult next week and... If he wants to go down the route of, uh, of using drugs, then that's fine, but if the police come across it, then it'll be dealt with properly. For the joint hidden in his trousers, the 17-year-old was given a community resolution order. If he's found with drugs on him again, he'll have to go to court. The driver was given a cannabis warning. No legal action was taken against the backseat passenger. So it's time to fight back. Do not move! Do not move! Battling on the front line are Nottinghamshire's finest. Stop resisting! Stop resisting! I'll go on to back right now! 
highly trained pursuit drivers. Right. Box on. Box on. Specialists in entry and search. Safety on. Rapid response firearms officers. We know you've got shotguns in there, mate. Shot fired. And the crime stopping force of the dog unit. Dog's got one. Stay where you are. Wherever the battle takes them, Fire. they'll never back down. Police officer. Because come at the hour. Running, running. I've got you Come at the interceptors. All in a day's work. <laughs> Coming up. You show yourself now, do you there? Extreme hide and seek, dog unit style. Hey! Get down! Get uh, down on the floor now. Instead of walk on. Oh. Couldn't walk away quick enough. It's gonna run. It's gonna go back towards you, Steve. Bagging a suspect baddie with bags of goodies. Number of bags. And it's a white van, it's failing to stop. Interceptors are on the tail of a transit van tearaway. Decamp, yes, decamp. Stop, stop, we've got a decamp, decamp. When it comes to laying down the law, the police dog is a four-legged superhero. Fresh him, fresh him, fresh him, fresh him. With speed, agility, and a sense of smell far superior to the human nose. And 42 pearly whites. And unlike gobby suspects, a canine crime fighter's bite is worse than its bark. <laughs> it's nearly 1 a.m., but raring to go. <laughs> Our dog handler Jen Els and her deputy dog Quantum. They've been drafted in to help with a job in Brockstone. Basically, they're course that failed to stop for cops. Um, they've lost sight of it, and then a few minutes later, they found it parked up abandoned. Cops suspect the hot hatch was nicked six months ago. Whoever's tearing around in it tonight has a few questions to answer. So we're going to go try and see if we can get a track from the car to where the offenders may be hiding. Jen and Quantum have been partners in crime fighting for three years. When they're not catching criminals, they're catching movies. And a firm favourite is Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. But it's Dog Detective Quantum who's leading man tonight. He's chomping at the bit to crack this case. Wait. At the scene of the dumped car, Sherlock Bones goes to work searching for a scent. Has anyone walked into any of the gardens? No. Quantum's onto something in seconds. He follows his nose into a garden next to the ditch car. A quick pit stop and Quantum leaps into action. Get down! Quant, quant, hey, leave. Get down on the floor now. Get on the ground, I've just done it with you. Get on the ground! Quantum's found a fella hiding behind a bin. Get on the ground now! And employed his trusty teeth based detention device. Stay still. Quant. Oh, oh boy. Watch him. Watch him. Steady. Quantum sniffed him out in one minute flat, nought to iffy in 60 seconds. Okay, stand up, mate. One suspect is in the doghouse. Mate, it's moving time, you're under arrest on suspicion of the theft of motor vehicle, all right? But the job's not over yet. When it failed to stop, how many people in the car? 
Again, we're not sure about uh, within two occupants. Quantum's got a lead and dives into an alleyway behind the garden. You show yourself now, do you there? He seems to be picking up another scent. Really going down here? Shush. Quantum's led Jen up the garden path, but something inside has caught her eye. That bloke himself in the house. The man isn't bothered about the interceptor or 30 kilos of German Shepherd roaming his back garden. Mate, please. What's he doing? But late night laundry isn't a crime. Jen has to leave him be and updates the cops waiting at the front of the house. He's shown interest round the back. Can't say he's tracked to the back door, but he's just shown interest to there. With the area cleared, Jen heads back to the car to check for any injuries on Quantum's earlier catch. Just take your slip your arm out, mate. Oh, you're right, there you go. Close, have saved you. Yeah, don't think there's any injuries there. You've had two coats on, aren't you? Eh? Not lucky enough. Hmm. As luck would have it, the interceptors have got hold of an image, which reveals who was in the car. Yeah, that bloke you could uh, see messing around in the back garden where he took you to the door. It's uh, pretty much that bang on. You can see his beard and he's wearing the same clothes. Happy days. They've got clearly gone that way, aren't they, to try and get to the back door of this house. The game's up. The suspect Jen had her eye on in his kitchen will also be taking a trip to custody. Come, come. Good boy. Quantum is amazing. I couldn't do it without him, could I? I mean, where, where do you start looking? It's like a needle in a haystack. He's took me straight there, hasn't he? He's not sort of an, in, an inventive hiding place like the other lad had who'd gone in the house. But even then, he took me to the, eventually into the garden, to the door. Both driver and passenger were released without charge for handling stolen goods, and no action was taken regarding the suspected stolen car due to insufficient evidence. Quantum, you are the bomb. You is getting most chicken for dinner, mate. Coming up. Wrong side of the road, red lights towards oncoming traffic. White van man refuses to stop. Speed is 5-0 in a 3-0. And a suspected drink driver... I am behind the vehicle. ...has the brakes put on for him. Box on, box on. Oh, got it off down. Seatbelt off. Nottinghamshire interceptors have a patch of 834 square miles to patrol and a million plus people to protect. For the shift today, we're covering north uh, of the county, so we'll be covering Mansfield and um, up to workshop around those areas. As always, you know, we'll be looking out for any stolen vehicles, vehicles that fail to stop, um, generally the criminals using the roads. Andy Clark recently celebrated his policing Silver Jubilee. There was no bunting or street parties for Clarkie. Just another shift with Phil Broughton, his on-off partner for eight years. Phil's more interested in this white transit than Silver Jubilees. Yeah, 10-4, currently following his vehicle on Chester Street. Phil runs the motor past control. No insurance means this van shouldn't be on the road. Two up, uh, we're going to go uh, code one. So Phil and Clarky light it up. Ready? Yeah, go on. Blue lights have no effect on white van man. He's going. Oh, he's going all right. The pursuit is on. Oscar Tango is in the way. It's a white van. It's failing to stop. Phil and Clarky need to keep him in their sights until the cavalry roll in to help with the stop. Stand by, stand by. It's a right, right, right down towards uh, the A617. Speed currently 3.5. We've got brake lights. Stand by. 
The Transit wasn't built for speed, but what it lacks in grunt, the driver makes up for in grave errors of judgment. Yeah, just uh, SO go is wrong side of the road, red lights towards oncoming traffic, high DRO. We are 4 8 in a 3 0. Whoever the red light runner is. To right, 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 onto Sherwood Rise. They clearly have something to hide. It was a stop check, uh, drivers failed to uh, respond, we've put the blues on. Yeah, we're Sherwood Rise towards Dunzill Road. We've got brake lights, standby, just coming to the junction. Speed currently 4-4. Four, four. Forcing other cars to hit the brakes. Yeah, he's overtaking uh, traffic now. He's uh, towards Birding Street. Stand by, stand by. This dangerous driver is ramping up the risk and seems to know the roads well. It's a left, 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 our main right walk. Main bright walk, that's a dirt track that leads uh, leads out to the other side of Woodhouse. It's a merry dance in the dark as he leads the pursuit even further off the beaten track. A6075 direction, speed is 5-0 in a 3-0, stand by. He's back on busy roads, bound for the high street. Slightly bought to bike traffic, stand by. He barges through fellow van men and takes to the wrong side of the road. Yes, yes, just passing the old Nick. He's gone right, right, right onto Rose Lane. Rose Lane. Speed is currently 4.9 in the 3.0. We are just overtaking uh, traffic on the wrong side of the road. Coming past Manor Comp, stand by. Van man's got another risky trick in his transit. He's straight over without stopping, straight over the wrong side of the road. The reckless driver blindly blows through a junction at 40 miles an hour as a child waits at the roadside. But he can't throw off Phil and Clarkey. Larch Avenue, Larch Avenue, speed is uh, 3 5. Brake lights, stand by. Stinger unit at the uh, junction of Newman Lane 860. Stinger on a road is music to a cop's ears, but the road is rapidly running out. They'll never be able to sting him down here. Now he's going off road, up a dirt track, off road, up a dirt track. It's the easy film. Gotta be careful, we're gonna end up grounding. Yeah, you are, mate. Pursuits follow patterns. Off-roading usually leads to a cross-country run. Brake light, brake lights, brake lights. Decamp, decamp, yeah, decamp. Yeah, stand by, stand by. We've got a decamp, decamp. Stand by. Oh, it's up near the field lane. Wheel stitched. Fills out of the traps like a greyhound. I've got no gear. Might have gone down here. Clark, he's close behind. From 756, where we've ended up decamping. I believe he's gone left into some gardens. That's the only thing I can see. He's gone, Andy. Down here, mate, yeah. I've already got people going up that way. Where's with, where was the first left? You could have gone. Well, mate, we could be well in there. Oh, I'm trying to, Danny. Yeah, there's nothing. It's just. Yeah. I think they may well have gone that way, mate. A valiant effort, but the trail's gone cold. From 756, description we got of him, he was wearing a red and black tracksuit top, dark bottoms. Yeah, well, it stinks of weed. <laughs> Inside the dumped van, Phil finds a bag of cannabis. And in a last ditch attempt to find the suspects, they've called in a dog handler to comb the area. So, do you just want to come with me and just show me where you've been up to? We have run out round a little bit for him. Pretty much, he's got out and ran straight up. I might prove to be a bit too tasty for the dog, so we'll let Phil go. Neither Phil nor the dog have had any joy. Their suspects have slipped through the net. But Clark is a cop whose cup is half full. Looking at the van, we know the van's got no insurance. Um, there's some question marks around the identity of the vehicle, so it may well be stolen, and there's a small bag of cannabis. So, OK, we've not got them, but what we have got is we've got the drugs for the night, we've got the vehicle, 
Um, so ultimately, every dog has its day, as they say, um, and we will, um, you know, we will catch them, no doubt, in future. The transit tearaways are still outstanding, for now. It's the early hours. November 3 2, I'm uh, Mapley Top Bag and Head Back. And whilst pubs are chucking out the last of the Saturday night drinkers, for interceptor Katie Eustace, the night is just getting started. A vehicle's failed to stop for our uh, one of the vans. It's registered to Beeston, which is a long way from Mansfield. So we'll travel up, see if we can come across it. A suspected drink driver has failed to stop for cops in Mansfield Town Centre. Now he's given them the slip. A template red polo. The polo is registered to an address near Nottingham and they're hoping to intercept it as it makes its way home. These routes home are quite limited. It's going to use a main arterial route, so one car is going to cover the Junction 27. We're going to come up the A60. That, it'll come that way back through Nottingham, through the city. It sounds like the plan has paid off. We've seen the vehicle. Barringer Road towards Forest Town. Come to Katie. It'll come out White Gates. It'll come out of the White Gates. Katie knows these roads better than a cabbie, but she's also an advanced driver. She's got t pack skills and she's not afraid to use them. We're nearly there, we're nearly there. Having floored it 15 miles across the county, she's hoping to cut the polo off at the next junction. I'm at the roundabout. In fact, she's beaten him to it. It's going to come from our left at any time now. And right on cue... Right, just confirm there's one more behind you. Yeah, there's a normal panda behind me. If it's a failed stop and be can, obviously I'll deal with that. Katie's got it exactly where she wants it. I am behind the vehicle. We've got a near sign indication, a left left, on back through Crown Farm Industrial Estate. Speed is 3-0. The driver's already failed to stop, and cops suspect he's had a drink. They need to stop him safely before he takes off again and hurts someone. The plan is to put a box on. We've got a vehicle further ahead in front of us. In other words, tea pack time. Risk is low. Speed is currently four or three eight miles an hour. A successful tea pack relies on three things. The vehicle will be right, 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 potentially. Communication, teamwork, and timing. And when it all goes to plan. Box on. Box off. Cops make it look as easy as ABC. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. Got it off the back. Seatbelt off. It's all right. I just want to yeah. come on me. You all right, fellas? All right. We're going to film you because you've failed to stop for us, aren't you? I, I, come on. I haven't failed to stop, have I? We'll get your fellas out the back as well. As well as the suspected drink driver, there's a band of three merry men in the motor. That's me, mate. What's your name? And it's fair to say they all look like they've been enjoying themselves. If, you, if you're going to behave like idiots, that's what we're going to do with you. Take a load. Harder, 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 right. The question is, how much? He's not over by much, but he's still off to the nick for a go on the intoxilizer, leaving his three mates high and dry 20 miles from home. So what have we got to do now, then? Are we stranded or give us a lift or what? I'll give you a lift. <laughs> to Mansfield Town Centre. Anything to get a taxi. Katie may be uber helpful, but she's not a taxi service. So, at the end of the day... I want to get home. I just want right. to get home. But, <laughs> end of the day... I know, I know, I know. I know. Right. Serious, serious aside, joke aside, joke aside. Joking aside, yeah, I know, I know, I know. your mate could have hit and killed somebody. I know, I know, I know. I know. So, I know. I get you think it's a laugh, I know. but it's it not, ain't a laugh for us to go around and tell somebody's parents that they're dead. I know, I know. I know. And, and that's why it's not really that funny. Right. 
Despite Katie's words of wisdom, the lad's still not learned his lesson. Oh, you're not going to be kind enough because we lift a match to a town centre? You've got phones on you? Yeah. You have to ring a taxi, don't. Sorry. It's easy to forget the true purpose of a telephone when you spend so much time using it as a camera. We're going, we're going to be famous. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Last me up. For that group, they've they've clearly all been out drinking. They all smell of alcohol. They're all quite animated, shall we say. They were asking for us to give them a lift back to uh, where they lived in the south of the county, to which we've politely declined. Um, they've chosen to come out drinking in Mansfield. Um, if their mate chooses to drink drive and they can't get a lift home, that's their problem, not ours. Back at the station, the driver blew under the limit to prosecute, so no charges were brought for drink driving. But he was convicted of failing to stop, no insurance, and driving without due care and attention. He got a £100 fine and six penalty points. Whether his three mates worked out how to call a taxi remains unknown. Coming up... He stood there, saw his and snapped his head back. Interceptors play a game of cat and mouse... He's running, mate, look at Yes, here we go. And... Oi, yo! No, 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 no! Paint the town blue on a Saturday fight night. Don't tense up. Don't do anything silly. A key weapon in any cop's crime-fighting arsenal is a fully loaded copper's nose. You'll often hear police officers talk about a copper's nose. But what it is, it's basically your gut telling you that something's just not right. You know, in the police, we get lots of access to technology now, but you still can't be, you know, a bit of instinct to tell when you look at something. You know, trust your instincts and your gut. Copper's nous is vital to one unit, lending instinct and intel to protect the public, the knife crime team. No. It was as tinted as could be. Ken Tinley and his colleague are on patrol in Nottingham. Um, the commanders for the city centre have asked that we patrol the city centre. Um, so we're going to be looking for those sorts of individuals that we recognise or the sorts of behaviours that suggest to us that there may be some sort of criminality taking place. Before long, a passing car has caught their eye. Let's have a look at that white to A3 and these four roll. They follow the Audi into the back streets. It's gone into a blue coat close, pulling up on the offside and the bike. And they pass its details over to control. I don't think it's going to be anything of uh, consequence. False alarm. Checks on the car show the driver's legit. But forever on the lookout. This lad's just walked away as soon as we come around the bend, eh? Ken's copper's nose has sniffed out a shifty character loitering in an alley. He was stood there, he saw his and he like, snapped his head back and couldn't walk away quick enough. Come on the other side, go and have a look at him. Yes. They spin round to head off the suspect and call in the rest of the team to flood the area. The alleyway on your offside, Lee, an Asian lad was stood in there when we came down and he uh, couldn't walk away quick enough, so we're just going to get round to the other side. And on the other side... There he is. They soon spot the shifty suspect from the alley. This lad here with the white train, isn't he? There you go. Right, cheers. Yeah, he's gone back. He's, he's going to run. He's going to go back towards you, Steve. The suspects legged it. He's running. But with the area crawling with cops, he's nowhere to go. Yes, I did. Oh, yeah, we got him. He's run straight into the cuffs of the team Sarge, Steve King. Hey, fella, you all right? Yeah, yeah, you stink the weed, you got cannabis on you. And then some cannabis on you. Get some cannabis. Sergeant King on the knife crime team. He paid for purpose of drug search because he stinks cannabis and he tried to walk off from officers as an approach to Twice now. Okay, right, do we stand? Yeah, yeah? okay, mate. Right, Pretty whereabouts you got it on you? In my pocket. Pocket. Then, so I should be concerned about. Last year, the team searched over 1,400 people. 
and routed out illegal drugs in nearly a third of those cases. So we've got a number of bags. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bags. So you got a mobile on him? You guys want to know? got a mobile, which was ringing. It's ringing, is it? It was ringing. And he's got a couple of hundred quid cash. He may have looked like he was loitering in an alley, but he claims he was en route to his girlfriend with loads of weed. How much drugs have you got back at your house, mate? Nothing. No. That's what I got. You got dealing in? No, 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 no. I never. Where are you living? Trust me, I never do that. You never do that. Suspicion is mounting. He's on his way to the Nick. Okay, okay. Yeah, three, five P rates. Yeah, yeah okay. The under arrest, mate, and suspicion of session, they take supply cannabis. Immediately, there was a strange reaction. He turned on his heels as quick as anything and tried to stylishly walk out of, out of sight. He'd been found in possession of a quantity of uh, controlled drugs cannabis, probably 100 or so empty deal bags, uh, and, a, and, a, and a reasonable amount of cash. So those things together um, give us the impression that he's possibly in this area dealing. We'll look at his phone, we'll look at doing some property searches at addresses and things like that and see if we, if we can uh, strengthen this case of the intent to supply. After dropping the suspect off at custody, the team wastes no time heading over to Serge's house. There's been in this rucksack, so two big bags of this and two knives. These are these some serious damage. You know, these are these are designed for one thing and one thing only, and that's putting the fear of God into someone. I think. Well, that was in the bag with the cannabis, so when it's college gear. Mm -hmm. Especially wonder if he's taken them out with him. Mm -hmm not what you'd usually pack in a school bag, as well as the knives and suspected cannabis in the suspect's bedroom, there's a distinct aroma. It smells like grub, doesn't it? It smells fresh enough to say that there is a, a grub. And they think it's wafting down from the loft, so they're going to have to bust the lock. So they come from the bottom. They come from the bottom? Yeah. But they've just got to master the folding ladder first. <laughs> That's the top. Oh, God! That's the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nearly nice. job done. Got some what, mate? Mm -hmm. Smells like there's some freshly grown up there, doesn't it? Couple bars. They get to work on the lock. Just watch your eyes in case it goes. Ping. That's happening. Watch your eyes. The attic is clear, but the team do find clues about what the green-fingered suspect might be up to in his spare time. Oh, this looks like a kind of small do-it-yourself row tent, and then in here we've got some of the uh, the hydrophonic stuff. And we've got some fertilizer here. Just the typical sort of thing is you're going to get for your smaller scale operations for cultivation cannabis. This is going to be the remnants of a, a cannabis grow, what's been left over. It's, at some point there would have been a cannabis grow here. It's been cropped and it's been packaged up. Thanks to Interceptor Intuition, it's been a successful night's work for the knife crime team, with drugs and knives taken off the street. So um, they're going to be seized, although it's not a specific offence to possess your knife in your home, I think it forms part of a bigger picture as to what's happening here. Moving forward now, we'll, we'll, we're going to start seizing some exhibits, photographing things as it is, and then we'll look to interview this, this, uh, this person we've got in custody. The suspect, nabbed near an alleyway, is under investigation for possession with intent to supply cannabis. Nightlife in Nottingham is some of the best in the country, with nine pubs per square mile and a coveted purple flag status for safety. <laughs> Achieved with no little help from the interceptors who protect the public in van loads. Tonight's blue light bus driver is Matt Sisson, along with the boss, Sergeant Jay Lee. 
For as long as I've been a cop, which is 15 years, we've always put extra staff into the city on a Friday and Saturday night. People at the weekend like to go out and have a drink. So we go out there to try and facilitate everybody having a good night and enjoying themselves and getting home safely. But if there is uh, problems, we've got the staff there to deal with it. It's going to be a busy night, mate. It'll be a very busy night. These trousers have started to get quite fashionable, aren't they? Well, he's wearing like grey checkered trousers rather than jeans. Really? I'm so old. But the night is young. Where Parliament Street? Whereabouts? And the CCTV control room have already spotted trouble spilling out of a burger joint in the city centre. This one. Yeah. You won't be able to get. You won't be able to get down it. Come down on the street. Yellow coat. Yellow coat. Who's offender, please? Jay is directed to one of the men allegedly involved. Mate, come here. Mate, come on me. 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 You go with. No, victim. Why? Well, come on me. Can I, can I ask? What? They, what? What's occurred? A young man is lying injured on the ground. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. I'm relaxed. All right, come and talk to us, don't you? And this guy is suspected of putting him there. So, we've got reports from CCTV that you've assaulted somebody, so at the minute you're under arrest on special assault an unknown person. I've not done anything. If that's, and if that's the case, we'll sort that out. Yes? Yeah? Jump in there, mate, because I need to go and see what's happening down there, don't I? And I can't do that when I'm looking after you. The victim is now up on his feet, but bleeding from his mouth. Are you right, my friend? What's happened? Despite worrying injuries, Oi, yo. his mates seem more concerned with the camera. No, 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 you don't touch her. It's a public place. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. I'll right, understand. that's it then. Be there for your friend and that's it. Done. I'm going there. Don't put your hands on her again. Peace restored, the team try to get to the bottom of what's happened. He's IP for an assault. Right. They're his friends that have witnessed it. Okay, cool. The lad who's done that is yeah. the one in the white shirt who's run off down there. And he's in my car. Oh, have you got him? Yeah. Oh, excellent. It'll be a racially aggravated ABH then. Okay. Um, I've got the yellow coat lad, so he's going to come in as well. With an ambulance en route, Jay heads back to the van. So what's going to happen now is I've got two going with the victim down to the hospital. They'll try and get a statement from them. We're going to take this prisoner down and get people booked in and we'll start trying to unravel what's happened. After booking in his suspect to custody, Jay reviews CCTV footage of the fight. And it soon becomes clear the lad in the yellow jacket was not the one throwing the punches. He tries to push his attacker off. Whilst the man in a white T-shirt punches the victim to the ground before knocking him out cold. The man in the yellow jacket was innocent. Jay releases him from custody. I've looked at the CCTV. Yeah. You didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. With one wrong righted. Nothing. Take care yourself, mate. Thank you very much. See you later, pal. Thank you. Other officers will pick up the investigation so Jay and the team can get back out on patrol. It's just a wet and miserable night, isn't it, at the minute? I feel like a shop of tunnels. Go, Go home. home. Children. <laughs> Go to your beds. If you go now, you will have more money tomorrow. <laughs> to buy better headache. trousers. <laughs> <laughs> As Friday night creeps into Saturday morning. Two minutes away, we're just uh, near Cramp Plaza. There's reports of another assault in the city centre. It's a lad, bald head, 30, black top with a golden logo on it, keeps running away from uh, the cops that are there. A foot patrol fills Jay in. Hey yeah, mate, where did I see him? Running up there. We've, 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 just, we've just been we've just following him away. Right, he's going to be, he's going to be wood. Yeah, we'll find him. Put your blues on, mate. Matt spins the van round and the team keep their eyes peeled. Uh, he's run up here. Where would you go? Would you go right? That's him there, isn't it? I'm going to have a look. That'll be him. The suspect is in their sights, but he's on the run again. Yeah, yeah. Just jumped in there. Where is it? Anyone? One or two, one or two. Where's he gone? He's gone here. I don't know if he's hiding in there, if he's gone round the corner or not. The running man's gone to ground, but he can't have got very far. 
You reckon he's still right there? The Sarge has a hunch. It's gonna be in bushes, Doc. And sure enough. Help me! Come here, my Doc. What have you got, my Doc? Yes, I don't know, let's find out. What are you doing here? Hey, mate. What's hey, happened? Mate. Yes, sir. The team plucked their suspect from the bushes. What have you been running away for? No, I'm not running away for nothing. Have you? you sound a bit out of breath. What's happened? Hit someone, aren't you? I've left someone. Are you mad? The bushman fits the attacker's description to a T, so he'll be spending the night in the cells. Keep walking, Doc. I'm not doing nothing. Calm yourself down. I'm calm it down. He seems to have got up on the wrong side of the bush. Hey, don't struggle. Don't, don't struggle. tense up. Don't do anything silly. Oh, I'm not... You're on the bottom floor. Just walk. Do you understand me? Walk. Yes? Have you got anything on you you shouldn't have? No, no. You are going to be searched, all right? Yeah. See yourself down. Turn around and sit your bum down. Happy that he's now in the van and we'll uh, hopefully he'll be able to get him down to custody. The five minute drive to the Nick is the perfect time to sit back and relax. Ah, oh, the mate, we're at the custody suite. And Dave, what you took your shoes off for? But Bushman has made himself too comfy. Get to do with me, Paul. Sit down. Get to do with me, mate. What? They're not your shoes? No. No. Naturally. Okay. Uh, have I been caught with them, man? No. His not-so-fancy footwork is tying up two cops on one of the busiest nights of the week. Are you going to put your shoes on? Yes, I will be. Come on, then. Lovely. Put them on for me, then. What's your name, please? Sergeant Lee, 2975. Would you put Sergeant your Lee, 2975. Yeah, would you put your shoes on, please? Do I need to? Luckily, patience is a virtue the Sarge has been blessed with. Listen, is it a legitimate order that I put my shoes on? I'm not ordering you, I'm asking you. You're because I don't me. want you to walk across this wet floor, look. You're asking me. Yeah. Sorry, mate. What law is Come on. that? What Good law luck. is that there regarding? Step down. What law is that regarding? Step down. What law is that regarding? What law is it? What law is it? What law is it? What law is it? Good luck. Come on. The law of common sense, mate. Left, right, left, right. Now let's walk through there. Yep. Don't bang yourself. No, not bang myself. There we are. Good lad. Jump oh, in there, then. Welcome to custody. Hello. Don't be silly. Why are you being silly now, mate? Why are you doing that? Put me in the cell. We will do. Happy to oblige. Tell you what, do you want to do some press-ups? Same time? No? I'd rather not. You'd win. Your luxury cell awaits. Come down to your knees for me. Now pull your legs out. Yeah. There we go. Good lad. Well done. Well, the first thing I need to do is to take some details from you. What's your data for? A little bit, mate. No sooner are the cuffs off. Stop. Struggling. He starts to struggle once again. I don't do this thing. The prisoner has allegedly already assaulted one person this evening. So, for the cop's safety and his, he is restrained. Okay, then, relax. Relax. Yeah. Until the cuffs can be safely removed. Are you relaxed? Yes. Oh. Stop, stop tensing. No. We don't deal with the nicest people, and particularly on nights like this where people have been drinking a lot, people are very unpredictable. His fellas. When he's fit to be interviewed and dealt with in the morning, uh, an officer will interview him and take the job from there. Bushman was charged with assault by beating and awaits his day in court. No legal action has been taken against anyone involved in the fight earlier tonight, as the victim did not want to take it further. Still to come. Are you, are you normally this lethargic? Phil puts a dopey moped rider to the test. Well, the thing I want to make sure is, is whether or not your driving's down to the fact that you're taking cannabis or it's down to the fact that you're just a drip. It's late afternoon. And fills out in his patrol car of choice the unmarked BMW 3 Series. We're heading into the uh, Mansfield. Ashfield area. We're out in the uh, unmarked advanced car, uh, which gives us a bit of an element of surprise. Just general float around the area, see what we come across. One surefire way to catch an interceptor's attention oh, to a bit quick. is to ride your moped like this. After a near miss at a T junction, Hospital Tango 82, mate. Can I have a code 2 vehicle check? 
The reckless moped driver darts through the streets, weaving in front of pedestrians and dodging through traffic. Two wheelers often make a break for it, pressing home their advantage in alleyways and tight roads. But this one seems oblivious to Phil's covert cop car. That's more like it. Uh, he pulls up at a mate and, surprise, help! Need a chat with you? Sure, Take your helmet off. Take your seat in the back of that car. Are you a moped? Huh? Are you a moped? Yeah. How long had it? About nearly a year. Nearly a year? Thank you. Yeah, take a pew in there for us. The lad's got some explaining to do. Right, reason I want to uh, speak to you. In fact, you tell me why I need to speak to you. This is probably going a bit too fast. And what else? Can you go down the street? Uh, We're driving really erratically. So why was that? You were swerving all over the road. You nearly hit that car at the end of the junction, that white car. Just, just got it back yesterday, just got it fixed. So. You're just having fun? Well, it's not having fun, but you're going to end up having a crash, aren't you? You're going to end up either killing yourself or injuring somebody. Oh, you got your licence on you? Phil loves nothing more than taking drink and drug drivers off the road. And with 20 years policing under his belt, he's certainly seen his fair share. And his wrong and radar say something's not right with this rider. What we've got on is a shunt have, because you've obviously got something, because you're very nervous. Got a draw. A draw? Yeah. Where is it? In my pocket. Slowly grab it out for us. Any more weed? No, that's it. The 17-year-old moped rider hands over a small bag of cannabis. When was the last day you smoked some weed? Huh? When was it? Today. Yesterday. Well, no, actually, sorry. Are you, are you normally this lethargic? Huh? Are you normally this lethargic? You see, and very chilled. Very chilled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Phil's not buying it. When did you say the last time you smoked weed? About nine o'clock. <clears throat> right. I require you to provide me a sample of saliva for a drugs test. An eight-minute drugs wipe test will soon clear up whether the lad's under the influence of cannabis or cocaine. Cool. And all I need you to do now for is lean forward and stick your tongue out. All the way out, as far as you can. That's it. Driving under the influence of cannabis may cause slower reaction times, poorer concentration and affect someone's ability to judge distances. Is it fine if it's about nine o'clock this morning? A fine? No, do you think it'll be fine? Oh, I don't know. It depends how much you've got in your system. How often do you smoke it? Every other day. Every other day. Well, the thing I want to make sure is, is whether or not your driving is down to the fact that you're taking cannabis or it's down to the fact that you're just a drip. Either way, you can't be driving like that. Yeah. Whilst they wait for the result, Phil keeps himself busy. Cool. And searches the relaxed rider. Cool. Anything here that shouldn't be? Knives, guns, drugs, explosives? No? <laughs> Wait, cannabis grinder. Out in it? The search is clear, but it's time to find out whether it's drip or drugs affecting the lad. You've provided a positive drug wipe. You see those two red lines, and you see that there's a very small one forming underneath, where it says under cannabis. Uh, so at this moment in time, I'm arresting you on suspicion of driving this moped whilst over the specified limit for cannabis. And I'm also arresting you on suspicion of possessing a controlled drug believed to be cannabis. Having failed the drug swipe, the teenager will be taken to the NIC for an evidential blood test. Initially, when I saw it, he wasn't displaying a rear L plate, so we would have had a chat with him uh, if the opportunity. But no, if he'd been riding normally, I would potentially would have just been a chat to it through through the window. But no, he's brought it on upon himself by driving erratically. A blood sample was sent to forensics and came back under the legal limit. However, the 17-year-old did receive a youth caution for possession of cannabis. We see it all too often, uh, people getting behind the wheel after smoking a bit of weed, taking coke or, or other drugs and then being involved in really serious... Xin chào các bạn, chào mừng các bạn đã quay trở lại với kênh của mình hôm nay nhé và hôm nay chúng mình sẽ cùng nhau học sang một kiến thức mới của dạng toán phân số này là chúng mình... chính là chúng mình sẽ làm sang dạng toán tìm phân số của một số nhé Tìm phân số của một số này
Rồi bây giờ mình sẽ có một ví dụ như sau Mình sẽ có một rổ cam có 12 quả này Vậy thì hỏi 2 phần 3 số cam trong rổ là bao nhiêu quả? Nào Một dấu cam có 12 quả nhá Có 12 quả này Hỏi 2 phần 3 Số cam Là bao nhiêu quả Nào Bây giờ chúng mình có thể thấy gì nhỉ Chúng mình có thể lấy gì Muốn tìm được 2 phần 3 số cam trong rổ là bao nhiêu quả thì chúng mình sẽ lấy gì nhỉ? À, sẽ lấy 2 phần... À, chúng mình sẽ lấy 2, 12 nhân với 2 phần 3, đúng, đúng chưa nào? Đúng rồi, bây giờ nha, chúng mình sẽ cùng nhau giải này, bài giải. Mình sẽ có gì? À, 2 phần 3 số cam trong rổ là đúng không? 2 phần 3... Số cam trong rổ là này đây là câu trả lời này mình sẽ lấy gì nhỉ 12 nhân với 2 phần 3 bằng bao nhiêu đây mình sẽ lấy này 12 nhân với tử của nó được chưa 12 Nhân với 2 chia cho 3 Đấy, chúng mình sẽ thực hiện phép tính như này, được chưa? Và bằng bao nhiêu đi? 12 nhân 2 thì bằng 24 chia cho 3 thì bằng bao nhiêu nhỉ? À, 38, 24 đúng không? Bằng 8 quả, chính xác chưa? Đấy, vậy thì đáp số 8 quả này Qua đây thì chúng mình thấy được điều gì nhỉ? À À, 2 phần 3 của 12 chính là bằng 8 đúng không chưa? Chính xác chưa? Và chúng mình đã học tiếp được một pháp nhân này Khi lấy một số mà nhân với một phân số thì chúng mình sẽ lấy số đó nhân với tử của phân số rồi chia cho mẫu Chính xác chưa nào? Đúng rồi Đấy Qua đây thì chúng mình đã biết cách tìm uh, uh, gì nhỉ? Tìm phân số của một số chưa? Rồi đúng không? Đúng rồi. Vậy thì bây giờ nhá, chúng mình sẽ cùng nhau thế này like video rồi đăng ký kênh nhé. Hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở trong các video tiếp theo. Xin chào các bạn nhé. Chào mừng các bạn đã quay trở lại với kênh của mình hôm nay. Và hôm nay chúng mình sẽ đến với một dạng toán mới đó chính là dạng toán tìm hai số khi viết tổng và tỉ số của hai số đó này. Bây giờ nhé, chúng mình sẽ cùng nhìn lên bảng và cùng nhau theo dõi một ví dụ nhé. Giờ mình có tổng hai số là 96 này được chưa? Tổng A cộng B bằng 9, 96 Đấy, bây giờ này Tức là số A cộng với số B thì bằng 96 đấy Tỷ số của hai số đó thì bằng 3 phần 5 Tức là A chia B Thì bằng 3 phần 5 này, được chưa? Bây giờ người ta yêu cầu là tìm A và B Đây, bây giờ chúng mình sẽ phải tiến hành làm nhá Bước đầu tiên của dạng toán này ấy, thì chúng mình sẽ phải tìm ra tổng số phần bằng nhau được chưa? Tổng số phần bằng nhau là sẽ bằng A cộng với B này Đây này, tỷ số của nó này, lấy từ cộng mẫu này ra tổng số phần bằng nhau Bây giờ chúng mình sẽ giải nhá Giải này Đầu tiên là chúng mình sẽ tìm gì nhỉ? À, tổng số phần bằng nhau đúng chưa? Mình sẽ tìm là tổng số phần bằng nhau là mình sẽ lấy gì đây à 3 cộng với 5 thì bằng 8 phần được chưa đấy bây giờ nhá mình sẽ tìm số bé này số bé thì sẽ bằng tử của nó 
chia cho 8 tức là chia cho 8 phần và nhân với à quên số bé sẽ bằng tổng của nó chia cho 8 và nhân với tử được chưa đây số bé là à sẽ bằng 96 chia cho 8 mà nhân với 3 nào chúng mình tính đi 96 chia 8 nhân với 3 thì bằng bao nhiêu à bằng 30 36 đúng chưa Vậy là chúng mình đã tìm ra được số bé bằng 36 mà biết tổng của hai số bằng 96 vậy thì suy ra gì nhỉ số lớn của chúng mình sẽ bằng gì đấy số lớn là nào chúng mình đã tìm được ra số bé rồi thì chúng mình sẽ tìm được ra số lớn sẽ bằng 96 trừ cho số bé là 36 và sẽ bằng à bằng 60 đúng chưa đúng rồi vậy nhá đây chính là dạng toán tìm hai số này khi biết tổng và tỉ số của hai số đó được chưa nào vậy thì về nhà chúng mình sẽ cùng nhau ôn tập lại kiến thức và sẽ cùng nhau tiến hành like video rồi đăng ký kênh nhé hẹn gặp lại các bạn trong các video tiếp theo